So what does the skin do for us? The skin holds all of our organs inside. It protects us from the outside elements. We oftentimes might get scratches, but that protects the inside of our body. It's also a way for us to maintain a normal body temperature. <clears throat> and we want to take a look at it to make sure that we don't have any moles or spots on it that could potentially lead to skin cancer. So it's really important that we protect our skin. So when we're outside, we will go ahead and wear sunblock, wear a hat. We also want to protect ourselves from insect bites because we can potentially get an infection from those such as Lyme's disease or West Nile virus. So spraying with a bug repellent is also something that we want to go ahead and do. So if we find that we have developed a skin cancer, we'll go ahead and have that removed. Unfortunately, skin cancer can be deadly if not treated in a timely fashion. So we want to make sure that we make sure those moles and spots aren't changing in any way, shape, or form. Welcome back, everybody. Professor Miller here. And today we are going to talk about skin temperature. So... First off, let's go ahead and determine what normal temperature is. So take a moment or two to write down what you think normal temperature is. We can measure temperature in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. So you can go ahead and pick whichever one you would like to use, whether it be Celsius or Fahrenheit. And also think about what are some of the functions of our skin? What does it do for us? We are going to talk about the normal temperature of 98.1 or 37.2 Celsius. And that is when my body is functioning at its best. My body does not like to have a low temperature. When things get low, things slow down. So my heart rate will slow down, my breathing will slow down, and I will feel cold to touch. If I have a fever or my body temperature is too high, I can literally start to cook. So if I have a temperature of 103 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, I might start having seizures. And that's increased electrical activity in the brain. And my brain does not function as well. And actually it's kind of like I am cooking my brain because it is so hot. So we're going to go ahead and monitor our patient's skin temperature with a sensor. And this sensor is a little round disc that we go ahead and put on our patient and we can tape that in place. And that will measure our patient's skin temperature. We'll move it around because this can cause pressure on the skin and we don't wanna cause any tissue damage by having this on and in one place for too long of a period of time. So, what causes our patient's temperature to rise? A fever, such as an infectious process, will cause our patient to have an elevated temperature. Some medications will do that as well. How do we drop our body temperature? Well, right now in summer, it is very hot and humid, so we are going to sweat. And that sweat is evaporated off of our body, and that is how our body cools itself. We may find our heart rate goes up a little bit, as well as our respiratory rate goes up a little well. Now, if my body is too cold, I need to warm it up. And so what we do is we start to shiver. And that shivering increases our metabolism and we will elevate our body temperature so that medications and my body systems work properly. When we're taking care of newborns, newborns have a very 
large body surface area, which means they have a lot of skin that is exposed. They don't have a lot of fat as some of us do as we get older. That fat helps keep them warm. And they also many times have very fine hair soon after they are born to help keep them warm as well. We will also use a temperature sensor, though much smaller, to monitor their temperature as well. We need to keep our children warm. So many times you'll see them wrapped up in blankets and often they will have a hat on their head. We all know that heat escapes through our head. So whenever we wear a cap, we will find that we will feel warmer than if we didn't.